first to you all because yes just like it does that sun spins well we spin around it maybe you don't could be a wall around the world you never know you never know friday has landed on us once again and it is time to kick back relax take those goddamn shoes off and just have a generally good time because drama time is here to put a smile on your faces to enter your weekend in the best possible way and that seems exactly what we plan to do. What a week it has been again, man. We were talking earlier on just how much stuff goes on around our community, around all our work stuff, every single goddamn week. It's hard to remember what we do. We started our basic series. Dodge it helped out a bunch of people. We found out that 20 minutes worth of doing an app is infuriating and just ridiculous. I would rather spend hours in the pug world instead. And we also got Resident Evil 8 very early, thanks to Capcom providing us with a copy. And we did a 10-hour stream last night. We've been streaming since 8.30 a.m. this morning. Oh, god damn. Oh, god damn. So much stuff in just the last few days. Woo! To top it off, you have a nice Friday feature tonight with some silly stories from my history. Uh, as inspired by our wonderful audience was, why, what about, instead of, you know... The greatest raid bosses and all that. What about the stupid and silly things that warm my heart? And also the things that have driven my heart into absolute darkness. So you're going to get the full contrast of that. Tonight will be the good stuff that has happened to me over the course of World of Warcraft. Some stories to be told, to kick back and have a cup of tea to. And then next week it will be the worst moments. The scary moments. The things that are like... <laughs> that have driven me to utter insanity over my years of playing World of Warcraft. So I hope you get a good kick out of it. I think it should be a bunch of good fun. Uh, but right now, though, <clears throat> right now, it is time to regale our audience with some tales of the weird and wonderful that occurs in the online community. I will say our keyboard was glitching before. We didn't have a space bar, so hopefully I could type things. But it looks good. We do love a good asshole, don't we? I hope this story, as you know, I do not pre-screen the stories myself anymore. It is thankfully done on my behalf, thanks to your wonderful support. And, uh, yeah. Is this somebody intentionally doing this? Is this, is this what this is? <laughs> is this it? No names required for this. Okay. This one is something. It comes from Bex in the chat. This one is something. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, I can tell you the tags that Bex has done for this. Uh, infuriating, makes you want to slap a bitch, and you thought the Reaper Man was bad. <clears throat> Are we ready to get angry? I, I'm worried a little bit. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see where it takes us. And I want to say hello to uh, a lot of new faces who are here for drama today. Hello. Uh, and hope you enjoy your stay for the next hour. Hi, Preacher! And your chat! I shall perhaps soon infuriate you. I don't know if this qualifies for the show, but it's a collection of small occurrences with a common theme. Uh, tales of, if you will. Mm. I have written to you before. It was a short piece on a poor gentleman desperately trying to complete his blood infusion. Today, I bring a collection of small stories to you. An anthology with a different antagonist, though. And that antagonist is me. I do not ask to be judged, for I am guilty. And unashamedly so. You see, I have a hobby. With a small hobby within a hobby. And like most hobbies, it can be extremely difficult for those who are outside of the hobby sphere to understand the appeal of such a hobby. So I will try my best to explain it to you all. Hmm. You see, it's not it's because you're outside of the fandom you guys don't understand it, right? That's why you guys don't like Ray Skywalker. You're outside of the fandom. Sad, honestly. <clears throat> I like okay. This initial little story is entitled I like to break World of Warcraft because I love World of Warcraft. I like to watch it bend desperately in an effort not to snap. I've broken mechanics. I've accessed and swapped out my stable pets on an unholy DK and entirely deleted my ghoul from my character. I've looted a dungeon boss 200 times in one hour on a single character and deleted it all. And I've been in shadow form as a holy priest and run around with a water elemental as a fire mage both in Shadowlands. 
I don't care to do anything with these to gain an advantage generally, though it may be hard to believe where Preach might like to push his character to the limits of his performance or beyond. I love to push Blizzard systems to the limit of their function and beyond. But I have one specific part of World of Warcraft I like to break the most. Over the past six and a half years, I have spent perhaps a thousand hours across many characters queuing for LFR with one singular purpose in mind. Wiping. Why? 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 Why would you do that? Why? I'm already exhausted just thinking about the amount of effort. You may recall a video Preach once made discussing the nature of LFR in Mists of Pandaria. And he came to the conclusion that any boss could be defeated by perhaps five skilled players and everyone else could be dead. True. He was correct. Thank you. And Blizzard's design for LFR tuning and mechanics has remained fairly consistent bar a few specific end bosses, lol Nazoth, to this day. To make things clear... Preach is in no way responsible for my actions that followed. I take full responsibility, and I also take the credit. Well, I mean, that doesn't make me feel any better. He is, of course, referring to our apathy video. You may remember the apathy that had spread across the community. I remember it well. If to put in context to that, I played a character that not only did zero damage, but also took the absolute most damage, uh, along par with the tanks. Just as an experiment, I did it once, okay? Just to show, just to prove a point, really. That's all I did it for. I wasn't inspiring anybody to do this. But that's what I did to just prove a point that nobody cared. Absolutely nobody in LFR cared whatsoever that I was such a fucking waste of life. At the release of High Mall, I was curious to see if Blizzard's philosophy had changed, so I decided to run my own experiment. Once I discovered it was true again... I thought of another question. If it only takes 5 or so good players and 15 corpses to defeat most bosses, and assuming there are 5 good players in every group, can every boss be defeated by 5 good players, 14 corpses, and 1 cosmically lucky and inconceivably bad player? In other words, who would win in this scenario? 5 crewmates, or a boss, and an imposter? <laughs> okay, you're playing Among Us LFR style? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, I see where we're going. We're doing Among Us LFR. All right. Yeah, nobody wins. I, I agree. I agree with the chat. Nobody wins. There's zero victory to be had in this scenario. And so I began my journey, friends. A journey to make LFR entertaining for myself. As the late and great Total Biscuit do not bring up Total Biscuit into the scenario. A game is defined by a fail state. And if LFR does not have one, it cannot be entertaining for me to auto-win. So I set myself a challenge. In every LFR I join, I have one objective. To drag it out as long as possible without being kicked. Jesus, dude. Oh. In your off time, do you fly above Hellfire Peninsula? Is that what you do in your off time? I feel like that's what you do in your off time. Is you just float above Hellfire Peninsula, waiting for people. That's that's how I feel this is. Right? This is far, far high. <laughs> he wants some, Okay. <laughs> he wants some credit from you. Okay? Our author would like the audience to respect what he's doing. Okay? Are you prepared in your hearts to have respect for this gentleman? <laughs> you should understand that this is far, far harder than you realize it's not easy to do this by the way and it's become a delightful puzzle with every new raid that comes out so here are the highlights of how i cracked the code chapter one then why mall to my great disappointment high mall was nigh impervious to my shenanigans right off the bat only the butcher had his abilities left foolishly unneutered and the only way for me to exploit those two group debuffs was to execute well-timed taunts on the wrong group, you son of a bitch, or to shuffle slightly when tanking myself. Alas, this was exceedingly obvious and easy to fail, as poor timing would only result in my own death, and the sheer prevalence at the time of who taunted raid announcing add-ons quickly got me removed, even on my first attempt per queue. To my amusement, though, Blizzard actually helped me out. The final wing of Highmall LFR was simply Imperator Margok and the trash immediately before his chamber. None of this trash did much, but I soon discovered that after a hunter ninja pulled the boss, 
The group had to wait some time before they were allowed to kick him. It turns out, you know, Blizzard implemented a minimum of 60 seconds since combat with a boss before you could kick anybody. As you will of course know, bosses generally have a respawn time of about 30 seconds, you piece of shit. Oh god. I am not going to your funeral, man. This allowed me plenty of time to run directly over to Imperator and pull him. Use greater invisibility, then pull him immediately on respawn again and reset him with no possible window for anybody to kick me. I kept that group busy for 10 minutes before everybody had left and I was alone. <laughs> I was pleased until another full raid appeared in front of me at once. So, I did it again. I did this over and over and over for three straight hours. Three hours I sat there. Why? Why do you have this much free time? I play games for a living and I haven't got this kind of time. What are you doing? <laughs> Do something more important with your day. Please. I beg of you. Do something more progressive, right? Something with a little bit more stuff. <laughs> oh, wasting hundreds of hours of people's time. Resetting a single LFR boss until DBM informed me that I had 250 wipes on this difficulty. Oh my god. <laughs> you should be really easy to track down though, right? There's not anybody else globally that has 250 wipes to LFR Imperator Margok. I called that a nice round number and my experiment successful. Then allowed the 50th or so set of people to kick me. A week later, I received the only action against my account I have ever received. The next week, trying to queue for LFR and any character returned the message, you may not queue for that instance. Blizzard banned me from queuing for LFR for one lockout. I truly, truly was very upset at this outcome. <laughs> I'm sure you were. I can't do LFR. What bothers me more is that the next day, after like re refreshing yourself, you were like, well, let's go again. Right? That was like your, your day planned. Like, well, that's enough for today, but I'm definitely coming back tomorrow to do some more, right? unquestionably this particular method was no longer intriguing and i left it alone i realized that by legion this bizarre kick prevention feature had been removed and to this day i wonder why i wonder too that's that that's, that's probably true actually there was probably more people than you doing this so sad so desperately sad <clears throat> so hellfire citadel after my LFR ban, I was spooked and didn't try it again until much later in the expansion. Hellfire Citadel was looking to be the same as Highball for me. Sadly, Iskar's wind barely moved you. You didn't need Socrathar's robot to do anything to kill Socrathar. Assault was, well, it's Assault, and Fell Lord more like Fell the Fuck Overlord. It was frustrating, but then, then I found something. Socrathar's robot had a few abilities, none of them particularly useful in LFR, bar one, that slightly increased the boss's damage taken. However, one launched an orb of Fellfire at a target that exploded when it reached. I noticed I did not have a range listed. As such, I pressed my big dumb robot face against the wall towards Tyrant Valhari, targeting trash and pressed it. Wouldn't you know it, the orb floated right through the fucking wall and pulled the trash, and engaged an endlessly spawning army of silencing doggos and imps to rush through the closed door. Nobody could close the portals, so there was nothing to be done. They would wipe over and over and over and over. And nobody figured out why. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> and nobody ever figured out why. I realized I could make a macro to target the trash from the middle of the room. At around five to six determination stacks, the sheer damage output would generally be enough to overcome this preview of the Legion pre-patch event and my fun would be over. But then I had another thought. Maybe I could just pull something else. The only thing to pull was the tyrant trash, which occasionally brought people to one health and made them unhealable, but they generally just died. But could I potentially find the right position in order to get Tyrant Valhari himself? Turns out you can. You can absolutely pull Tyrant Valhari using Socrathar's robot, and doing so will cause her to run towards it, right out of her arena and resetting immediately. Apparently, Blizzard had precautions for things like this in raids, at least at the time, and to prevent exploits. If any boss reset, all bosses reset. 
This meant that Socrates 10%, I could reliably and almost immediately reset the boss every single time. And nobody ever figured out what I was doing. They did figure out, though, that I seemed really insistent on getting in the robot, and that while I was in there, Valhari would sometimes be pulled. People began spam clicking on the robot to get in before me, and my fun would be over. This was the most interesting thing to be done, but there were a few others. Smuggling fire patches around the room in Zulharak was always some fun, but the best would be the Archimond Wing. Archimond would become infamous for being the first LFR boss since Garrosh to have a very high failure rate and to frequently hit 10 stacks of determination. I could never claim credit for this. It was simply too unnerved from normal for most LFR players to manage and I feel for them there. It was totally unreasonable to introduce so many mechanics to the LFR when Blizzard had made it a policy that they must not need to know anything or do anything to kill the boss. Eventually it would be nerfed a couple of times but what was nerfed bizarrely was his trash. There were three demons back from the Mount Hyjal raid. A dreadlord putting players to sleep with his shadowy magic. A doom guard who would apply cruel cripple buffs to the raid and powerfully stomp, stunning his enemies. And then there was this big fat boy with a stick that applied some weird budget version of doom to anyone except tanks that literally did zero damage. It just killed you instantly. LFR players hit things in front of them. They, as a rule, do not follow the entirely self-sustaining blood DK out across the entire platform... <laughs> you fucking arsehole. Oh my god. It's kind of ingenious. It's kind of ingenious, really. It is. It's actually kind of ingenious. <clears throat> LFR players, as a rule, do not follow the tank out across the entire platform and into the fell lava to hit the big mob. The fat boy would accumulate upwards of 100 kills on the raid as they slowly fought the other two demons died to the debuff and summoned an extra doom guard, only to release right there with all their armor broken, in combat with no way to repair. This trash would take 10 minutes or so as my co-tank and I laughed ourselves to tears, with hundreds of doom guards slapping away at him and a mountain of skeletons under them. When the fat boy would finally die, we would call the runner knight, thank the raid and leave them tankless in the queue, standing before Archimond. <laughs> How did nobody notice? Right? I would see that. God. It's so true, though. I've been doing stuff for the basic series, and just all you have to do in a dungeon group, like in Mythic Plus, is move one enemy away from the death ball, and nobody touches it. When I was doing... Because we did interrupting this week, right? So I was just watching for enemies. When, when tanks would pull... And all the melee mobs would run to the tank. And then there'd be one caster stood out on his own. And they'd just leave it alone. Every single fucking time. They would just leave the enemy alone. Because over here is AoE. AoE make number go big. <clears throat> Chapter 3 though. Are we defeated? Legion was interesting for Alpha. It was the first time a boss entirely. Categorically did not exist for the difficulty. Desolate host's final phase where you fight the desolate host was removed from the fight. That's true. <laughs> so weird. It had a continuation of Archimon's legacy with Kill Jaden, whose lethal mechanics received multiple nerfs to the point it could not conceivably kill anyone. And finally, it had absolutely nothing anyone could do to deliberately fuck anything up that couldn't be rectified by anyone competent with a taunt moving something. The Aura of Thorns on Scenarius? Perfect. I'll bring all the adds to the boss and they'll all reflect 100% damage taken to the raid. But the raid wasn't really doing damage. Bringing all of Elareth's spider adds to her at once, giving her a giant and range buff. That worked, if both tanks were undergeared. But that didn't last long. Guam could only kill you if you stood on the tanks or got run over. Those were the best we could do, really. I would teleport out of Star Augur's room with a monk, pull a bunch of trash and teleport back in, but that only worked the once. Thus, sadness befell my journey, guys. For about a year, I was mostly foiled in my attempts. I managed to find a world quest objective to kill a named Feltotem Torum marked as a demon that I could enslave and lock the entire shard out of completing it for hours, which was fun. I received tens of angry whispers and many slash rude emotes from nearby alliance. 
After around two hours and once a crowd of about 20 players had gathered, my pet's name suddenly turned from blue text to green text. I blink. I went to check my PvP toggle but was slapped with a dragon's breath before my mouse reached my name. Within five seconds, my squishy undergeared warlock was torn apart by the alliance. And I just sat confused. To this day, I don't know what happened. My best guess is enough reports triggered a GM to take a look at what I was doing. Saw what I was doing and figured a quick and easy solution would be to flag me for PvP. I admitted hilarious if bewildering defeat there. As far as Legion went, it was over. My shenanigans were at an end. But then... Then they presented me with Antorus. The best LFR raid of all time. Dogs. Bring the two together at a key moment to quadruple incoming raid damage. Portal Keeper, bring flames from the first platform down to the arena over and over until there's nothing but fire covering the whole room. ENR, just don't tank a Fel Reaver until it kills all the melee and barrages ENR to death in seconds. Imanar, queue as two tanks and never swap until the lightning arcs are chunking the whole raid every couple of seconds. Coven of Shivara, Gorfiend's grasp on some poor ranged cluster during the Norganon ads. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It is. Agrima. Death grip a small add onto the boss through. Oh my god. Death grip a small add onto the boss through a big add immediately after a different one had popped. Argus. So easy. Repeatedly die over and over until the tree runs out of charges and decays completely before the last phase even begins. And Taurus made my wait totally worth it. Now, some of you may be laughing. Many are probably annoyed. Several probably hate me right now. I just don't understand how you have this much time on your hands. I just don't get that part of it. You got all your food? Yeah. Wow. One second, guys. We've got food arriving. Awesome. Yeah, I'm doing my show right now. I'll be out and we're going to make slime in a bit. Yeah, we're making slime. Come on. Because <laughs> it's green. Need to grab that, Moo. Awesome. <laughs> All right, give me that. Oh. Go on, little bug. Make sure you close the door. We're making slime later. Multiple coloured slime. That's that's my plan for the afternoon. Slime stream? Stream the slime? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> so some of you may hate me right now and that's fine. But I thought I would end this here and leave you to decide whether you'd like to hear more. Or for you to decide whether LFR is fun or generally breaking shit is more fun. Nobody agrees with what you did. Nobody. Literally nobody. LFR, I mean, certainly in in Shadowlands, people in LFR are just getting renowned. It's already crap. No, don't say top lad. No, 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 no. Don't you. You're all liars. You're all absolute liars. No, you don't. Nobody likes that. You, you fucking liars. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are such liars. You're unbelievable liars. You will do anything against me. I swear to God. Uh, you will do literally anything. If I, said, if I said the sky was bright orange all day, you'd be like, nah. Ginger, that. Ginger. <clears throat> nice blue sky outside. Looks cloudy. Looks really cloudy. Right, accidentally. Okay. Joining the DCU. Oh, is this role players? Oh, it is. Okay. All right, set your role play to stun. Yeah, <clears throat> we're going in. I agree with you, Vidius. Banned for griefing. I'm going to send your email to Blizzard. I've got contacts. I'm going to put you in there. All right. <clears throat> oh, God. All right. I need you guys to get creative. I need you guys to get creative. We need two RP guild names. One of them is gnome themed. Okay. And the other one is evil themed. <sighs> okay. All right. Come on a chest is not gnome themed. Okay. 
<laughs> There's no gnome, gnome theme to be up there. <clears throat> Destination unknown. I like that. Destination unknown. Oh, no mercy is also good, but that's kind of evil. Uh, what's the evil one? <laughs> the ladder? Jesus. Darkness of the shadows. <laughs> That's <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> Can someone check while progress? For I'm doing it myself. Hold on. Let me while progress that. Is there a guild called Darkness of the Shadows? <laughs> Please. Darkness. Oh my god. Look, this is no offense. Your guild might be really good. It may be. Alright, so I just typed darkness in. We have Beyond Darkness. Risen Darkness. Essence of Darkness. Mass Darkness. Shadows of Darkness! EU Bronzebeard has Shadows of Darkness. EU X-Star has the Army of Darkness. Azralon has Death and Darkness. Blackrock has, Blackrock has the Heart of Darkness. Kazgaroth has the Shroud of Darkness. But thankfully, we're all saved because on the on Kelthalas in the US, we have the Destroyers of Darkness. So light bulbs, essentially. <clears throat> Which is all really good. I like it. I'm into it. All right, we all need to swap alliance, get to Bronzebeard, and join the Shadows of Darkness. That's where it's going on. That's the place we need to be. Saved. <laughs> We're saved. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> oh, a preacher of the glorious chat. I would like to share a very recent tale from the RP world and the peculiar characters one could meet in these guilds. We're, we're ready. We're ready, aren't we, team? We're ready. <laughs> We've been through some weird stuff in the last couple of days during our Resident Evil 8. This is nothing. A bit of history, then. I first saw World of Warcraft, who uh, was at a friend's house after school at 10 years of age. My friend proudly showed off his night elf hunter in full field marshal gear and gave me the tour of the Stormwind. My mind blown. I had played a lot of games by this point, but nothing that looked like World of Warcraft. Everything else paled in comparison to those gleaming walls of Stormwind. I knew I had to play it, and after a painful amount of pestering, my mother caved and bought it me. It took four days to install the five discs on our family laptop. Jesus fucking Christ. Four days, a laptop, a family laptop. Yikes. I might have been better off playing the game in PowerPoint, but damn it, it worked. <laughs> after much deliberation, I settled on a gnome rogue that I still play as a main to this day. R.I.P. Combat, and I'm still sad about it. Same, bro. Same. While I started in the middle of vanilla, I only captains can say I played World of Warcraft. I actually did some form of real com content in the Burning Crusade. which one of my, uh, With one of my favorite memories being getting to Shatrath for the first time. Really? The tour around Shatrath? One reason not to play TBC Classic is having to do that fucking tour again. Over the years, I have flip-flopped between higher-end raiding, be it heroic or mythic at the time, or become an arena menace with my friends. But no matter which content I was doing, there was always something that I did on the side on casual days. And that, my friends, of course, was roleplay. I have yet to reveal that I play on the Argent Dawn, a high-population alliance server. You see, I've always enjoyed writing. I'm on the autistic spectrum and from a young age channeled an overactive imagination into written form, be it poetry or stories. Once I quickly discovered that I'm not the only one to do this and in fact the realm was designed for it, I felt at home. My gnome rogue became a character, one that I still RP as to this day. Some 15 years of memories, experience, tales and of course tears are in my back. Let's go then to BFA. Nazoth fell and the Shadowlands was but a glint in our eyes. A very, very far off glint. A lot like patch 9.1, I guess. Or so it felt. The raiding guild I was in fell apart after failing mythic football one too many times. Satisfied with my achievements and little desire to go back into mythic, I fell back on all reliable. I opened up the Argent Archives, a forum site to organize big RP events, and searched for any events that would take my interest. Or be of interest to a gnomish tinkerer. I took note of a Draenei culture festival on Azure Mist taking place in a few days. Draenei culture? Is there such a thing? What do you do at a Draenei culture? I'm so curious about RP, man. I am. I wish I could enjoy it. What's a Draenei culture festival? What do you do there? Eat grass? <laughs> it's very much like a farm thing. <laughs> 
bang the goat ladies. You see, we don't know. None of us have got a clue. We haven't got a fucking clue. We've got, <laughs> we've got nothing. We haven't got it. Just look at our cloven feet and just enjoy it. <laughs> the page was well put together with custom banners and extensive itinerary, plenty of events and competitions. All right, fucking hell, man. Deny <laughs> cultural event. Festival. The Festival of Light. Got it. Oh, the post was deleted. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Wait. We might be saved. Okay. All right. We're assessing this. Hold on. Ironically, it's also suggesting pictures of uh, Ozzy Osbourne. All right. Let's see what we got here. We're jumping in. All right. Sending off two spirit parents with their child into the light. You're killing people? The street of light to guide the spirits? This is cool, man. A speech by one of the hosts? The Drenai Menagerie. See, there's so much of World of Warcraft I've just never seen. So we got all the Drenai mounts and pets and things? A Drenai dance class? <laughs> <laughs> a sermon on the Drenai Exodus. Oh God, they tell the story of the Drenai Exodus? That would make sense, actually. A cultural festival, that would totally make sense. The finalists of the Elec race. Elec racing! Bruh. Archery contest, the sacred hunt. This looks like fun, man. It's like an actual festival. The ancient one holds a history lesson. Somebody RPs is the ancient one. Look at that. It tells you the history of the Drenai. That's Nobble. I'm telling you, that's Nibs. Spotted. There he is. Jadine Showmatch. I don't know what that is. What's a Jadine? That sounds like Star Trek. And then Ozzy Osbourne. Cra Isn't there so much about WoW that you just don't know exists? It blows my mind. Like, it genuinely blows my mind. It's so... It's When you find out about it, you're like... These guys don't care about conduit energy at all. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> the page was well put together with custom banners. An extensive itinerary. Plenty of events, compositions. This will do nicely. The day came, I cleaned up my transmog. I made my way to the Zior Watch. There were loads of people at the event. And not just an unorganized mess of individuals like outside Stormwind's Cathedral. But entire guilds were there. Drenai peddling mysterious wares, a menagerie of exotic... I assume what we just saw is what he's talking about here. A menagerie of exotic beasts from Argus, an exciting bout of Jadine. I don't know what that is. But most of, uh, most of, of most interest to my character, a seminar and demonstration of Drenai technology, because those light-forged mechs are cool as fuck. To my surprise, I was not the only gnome to take an interest in the presentation. Enter the guild this story centers around. Uh, which one is this? This is the Gnomish Guild, I guess. The Guild, Destination, Unknown. Jadine is there wrestling, a ritual sparring in Drenai culture. Interesting. So, greasy sweating. Yeah? Greasy boy play. I like it. I dove right in and started talking shop with the other gnomes in Drenai. After the presentation, I hung out with the members of this guild for the rest of the event. Particularly a field medic with a slight alcohol fixation named Delamere. We said our goodbyes and figured that that would be that. Yeah, talking shop, like role-playing. <laughs> the very next day, I found myself wandering through Stormwind Park when I saw a familiar character day-drinking alone. It was Delamere. Day-drinking? <laughs> God, day-drinking, wow. It was Delamere. I approached her and we got to talking. After a bit of catch-up, Delamere suggested we head over to the Golden Keg in the Dwarven District. It was here that I learned more about the destination unknown. A military squad that pursue and acquire titan artifacts for the good of the alliance and to the detriment of the horde. My character being an SI7 infiltration and sapper operative, so yes sir. The more I heard, the more I was enticed. Intrigue, ancient magics and some RP PvP, perhaps I had found myself a new home. After expressing interest in joining, Daedalus entered the tavern. Berating Dalamir for on her drinking habits, 
and gave me the militant ocular pat down with, <laughs> with a brief exchange of in character credentials I was given a guild invite and all the welcomes came my way before he left oh dudes ruined you ready fucking ruined man brace yourselves before he left daedalus threw a message in the pink o o c that's out of character to you rp noobs there is to be no erp in this guild can you change your trp profile to accommodate that thanks Total Replay or TRP is an add-on where you can set RP information, visual quirks, and personality traits. While I'm not one for ERP, I did have an option flagged for potential romance with my character if the RP was suitable. It, was in, it wasn't my hill to die on, let's put it that way. So I changed the flag to no romance and sent a quick message saying, no, no, I don't ERP. What happened next caught me off guard. When the guild mentioned they had a Discord, I was sent many links. One for the guild, a handful for a few allied guilds, but most notably, the Discord for Darkness of the Shadows. Shortly after joining the Darkness of the Shadows Discord, I was hit with a message from a co-worker I also RP with. Bro, you're part of the DCU now? Awesome. Any guesses as to what DCU is? I would love to, unless you are one of the RPers who knows what this is. To our un uneducated RP audience, including myself, I still do not know what this stands for. What does the DCU stand for? D's nuts. Probably not, right? <laughs> I'm scared to guess. <laughs> Confused, I asked, what is the DCU? Allow me to give you some insight into the server's politics. The DCU stands for the Diabetic Ginger Cinematic Universe. Oh my god, is this for real? In essence, they are a community of roleplay guilds that enjoy conflict-based RP and are firmly against cybering, ERPing in any form. Their namesake, Diabetic Ginger, unified the guilds in response to some ERP shenanigans that would require its own drama time to chronicle. As such, there are a good 20 or so guilds in this community and have a fair hold on larger scale RP events in the server. However, as with all things, there are arseholes. There are multiple accounts of homophobia, hypocrisy, and bigotry from those in officer positions within these guilds, even going as far as to attack at docks other players that aren't playing by the diabetic ginger cinematic universe's rules. <laughs> this is where it all falls apart. This RP shit is so intriguing until this moment. And this moment always comes. When it just gets into utter ridiculousness and you just can't... Your brain just can't handle it anymore. Your brain just can't handle it anymore. It just falls apart here for me. I just can't take it in. It just starts pouring out of my ears like some sort of goo. Now, I'm no politician. Nor do I worry about the day-to-day -day happenings on a World of Warcraft server. I log on when I can between the 40 plus hour grind IRL and pretend to be a tiny woman who is good at sneaking around and blowing shit up. That's all I want. I haven't had any interaction with these guilds or players prior to this moment, so I figured I'll just enjoy the roleplay, and if it gets weird, I'll stand over there. Deal. Deal. Why Diabetic Ginger? Diabetic Ginger is one of our supporters on the website. That is his name in the story. So Bex has changed his name into it because he's one of our website supporters. I was informed that I had joined a critical point in the guild's meta-narrative. The next day, a member of the guild was to be tried for war crimes. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> hey, you're glad you joined. Big day tomorrow. War crime trial, all right? War crime trial. <clears throat> He's going to be tried for war crimes against Pandarans. I mean, who gives a shit, right? They're not real pandas. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's against the Pandarans. Like, I don't know. They were probably drunk anyway. <clears throat> okay, I need to finish the sentence. <laughs> they used to be tried for war crimes against Pandaran civilians. Oh, shit. After a hostage situation in Pandaria went south. Yeah? Need some Chris Redfield on that shit. Going dark. I would have said, I would have got those pandas out of there. Safe. 
The guild was to be present in Ironforge to offer support. I tried to ask questions to get a wider picture. Who's the person? What happened with the hostage negotiation? I was shut down, though. That's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't. Right? Piss off. I was told that, look, all you need to know is a gnome is on trial, and we support our own. A bit frustrated, but nonetheless intrigued, I played along and showed up the next day. Oh my god, are we going to the war crime trial? Oh, f***ing hell. Devil's ready. <laughs> Again, another huge turnout. Destination Unknown made up 15 or so players, with an equal amount of Stormwind guards supporting the prosecution. Many others, all guilds from within the Diabetic Ginger cinematic universe, showed up. Draenei, Void, and Night Elves... By the time the three judges took their seat and the accused was brought forth, the PvP hall in Ironforge was filled with at least a hundred players. It was a sight to behold as chat flooded with emotes and reactions to the trial unfolding before our eyes. These guys were solid RPers, some of the best of the best. I couldn't help but get drawn into the drama as it became clearer and clearer that the humans were trying to scapegoat our friend. <gasps> Betrayal! By the humans? That's never happened. Nah, that's never happened. The crescendo of his call to execution being interrupted by night elven priests blinding the courtroom and teleporting our ally out of the city. Our own mages creating a body double to execute and appease their enraged humans. Oh, they did a doppelganger swap. I have to say... It was fucking awesome. <laughs> it was such an awesome event. Being thrown into the thick of things was so good. <clears throat> I spent a few months of summer lockdown in that guild, enjoying similar large-scale RP events. My favorite was a two-week excursion to the Badlands, where we skirmished with a Blood Elf guild akin to the Relickery over a Titan artifact that could harness solar energy, ending with my character setting dummy charges around their camp and using a wormhole generator to teleport away with the artifact in hand. <clears throat> I didn't hang out in any of the DCU <laughs> the DCU discords too often to keep up with everything I was part of eight different dif discords all of which were active with roleplay I much preferred to mute them all read the story updates and hang out on a server with IRL friends instead the few times, the few times I did join uh, Destination Unknown voice chats though I always heard something that never sat right with me on the first time I joined their voice comms they once overheard my wife getting frustrated with Final Fantasy XIV raiding through my headset. We live in a small, one-bed apartment, so we don't have the most space between our PCs, and loud outbursts do carry over. What's wrong with her? Someone asked. To which I explained, my wife was progressing EAS, and it wasn't going well. Wife? Imagine being married at 25, lol! Was the response I got. Raiding in, like, Final Fantasy. Shouldn't she be in the kitchen, mate? <laughs> Got him. Was another response. To which I shut that down immediately. It was quickly dismissed as their type of banter, however. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. During another time, we were camping after a victorious battle against the Forsaken and sharing a bit of character backstories when I was informed by another guild member that my character's backstory was too dense. Look, was the message I received. I get that you've been role-playing since the Burning Crusade, but that doesn't mean your character is, like, adventuring a lot, right? I found this really strange. What was my character meant to have done? In 15 years of World of Warcraft, we have gone to another planet, campaigned against the Lich King, slain a world-breaking dragon, discovered a mysterious land where negative emotions manifest into monsters, gone to an alternate dimension for some reason, fought demons by going to another planet, and pushed back an eldritch horror, all while continually warring with the other faction. What do you mean my character has adventured too much? Was my backstory supposed to be that I stayed in Stormwind, go to the Blue Recluse and just wait for everything to blow over? I started to get frustrated with the guild, but the problem was the events, the RP. Rock solid, 10 out of 10. Naturally, I should have hailed the advice of the preacher, praise be, and gotten out of there. But I stuck with it. Sometime later, I decided to re-roll professions. I dropped alchemy and having it on an alt and picked up jewel crafting. I decided not to attend an RP event in the Twilight Highlands that evening to work on smashing out my professions. 
I can't remember why, but I think it was for the tool. But a quest had me travel around the world to acquire some things. Coincidentally, one of those zones was the Twilight Highlands. Being nosy, I decided to have a quick flyby to see how the RP event was going. I flew over the Dwarven Taverns, seeing a few guildies below enjoying the festivities, and swiftly went about my travels as not to disrupt the event for the other people. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. The next day, a message. Daedalus. Discord. It was a series of screenshots taken of my character like they were spying on me during my flyby. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd be presented with my 8x10s. This is you. <laughs> you were spotted. I was hiding behind a lamppost from my fucking camera. <laughs> TRP uh, allows you to search for other characters that have TRP installed, as well as screenshots of my character flying away on my Mimiron's head. He asked me, what in the fuck were you doing there if you weren't part of the RP? Is there something you want to tell me, he said. I was honestly shocked at the CSI-style investigation that had gone on. I just mentioned I was doing a quest and passing over. Uh, that's all. Daedalus, in RP fashion, began a monologue. We have to be careful about who we recruit. That, as you already know, the guild is trying to weed out what we consider filthy degenerates. ERPers. It's imperative that we keep the integrity of the server's creamiest, juiciest, enlightened roleplay in check. I didn't know how to respond. I just said that, yeah, I agree. And okay, cool. Good story. To say I didn't have the emotional bandwidth for that would be an understatement. I'm pretty certain it was the very next day. I was idling through Twitter when a thought came across my mind. What do other players think of this guild? In a world with Twitter and Tumblr, surely someone must have posted something if there was fuckery afoot with this guild. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't think of this earlier. Well, imagine researching the guild you join. <laughs> Nerd, that's crazy talk. <laughs> Psh, only complete idiots double check before joining a guild. <laughs> <clears throat> so I hopped on my socials and did a bit of digging, which was when I came across this gem of a screenshot. I have edited the fiesta as best I can to block names, and I don't recommend you read the chat box. For brevity's sake, it is a screenshot of a gnomish orgy. All members of Destination Unknown with an oversized goblin partaking as well. Pretty much all of the officer team are present in this screenshot. What am I looking at, Bex? Am I looking at a gnome orgy? Hold on. It's <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> right, okay. All right, for our Spotify listeners, it is indeed a gnomish goblin orgy. Uh but thankfully for us, <clears throat> um it's the chat box that actually holds the real secrets. So we can see our I mean, it's hard to really make out, but there's definitely a gnome on knees. You can see the helmet here, the goblin there. There's definitely something going on behind here. Then They're not even nude, because maybe it's a quickie. However, the real darkness of this, like the genuine darkness of this, and I was modifying the screenshot. Is this what ERP is like? Okay. <laughs> I hope no... You think that's hot, Jack? I could go you one better. <laughs> In the text box is the ERP. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is about to, like, super demonetize this video. And is really, really quite crass. Okay? I'm going to use the word crass to make me sound above this. Yeah? Another word could be gross. Well, here we go. <clears throat> I'm just going to call... I'm going to give them their names as I think they are. 
Barry injects his pulsating horse cock and pushes her to the ground. Sarah actively rubs her little cunt with a dirty slurping sound. I mean, that's why we know you're a virgin. We don't make dirty slurpy sounds, right? That's how we know. Straight away. It's like so easy to figure this out. It took two lines and we figured it out. Like straight away. Dirty slurping sound. Like a straw. <clears throat> uh, I, need, I need a voice for Barry. <clears throat> I see you're still not satisfied, little slut. Barry. Barry takes Sarah by her hair. By hair. You haven't even done good grammar. S Barry takes Sarah by hair and pushes her closer to goblin dick. <laughs> it's not even good grammatically. It's terrible. It's like so badly written. Oh my god. <laughs> Here, make your daddy a little happier. Mmm, my mouth is made for daddy cock. Don't do it, Chris. <sighs> Sarah impales her head on goblin meat shaft and starts choking. And that's the final line. Why is it so noisy and slurpy and there's choking going on? Not sexy. Do you know what I mean? It's not sexy. <laughs> That's disgusting. It's loud and <laughs> messy. It's not nice. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Seeing this was quite enough for me. <laughs> nope. So our author's seen this and goes, nah. I sent Daedalus a message back asking, what is this? What is this screenshot? He very calmly dismissed me, stating that the whole thing is a Photoshop. Oh, it's a lie. It's manipulated information. Fucking mainstream media at it again. It's a shop. A shop, I say. It's a shop and a pathetic play by some fanboys to attack the guild. It's fake news. Before I could respond, he doubled down. He started bringing out pixel measurements of the chat box, stating that the ones in the screenshot at 13 pixels, whereas live is only 11 pixels. So the screenshot is nothing to worry about. I told him, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure, bro. And that was a whole lot of nonsense that I don't want to be associated with, whether it's true or not. I logged in straight away and G quit, and I haven't joined a roleplay guild since. Oh, don't let that spoil it. It was poor quality RP at best. Currently, though, I am loving the Shadowlands. I've started my own little guild that focuses on entry-level content for new players, be it PvE, PvP, or RP. I recently got our curve. I hope you enjoyed my little story. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> the pixels are a lie. <laughs> I've seen a lot of shops in my time. Should we send it to Clog for a validation? Maybe that's what you could be, Clog. You could be our screenshot validator. To, <laughs> to sort of like once over these things. Oh my god. <clears throat> uh, okay, we got a short one here. <clears throat> what time is it? We've got four minutes before I have to make slime. I'm, I'm on the slime duty. That was heavy. You know, earlier in the story. Early in the story. Uh, early in, in the day, actually. We saw that there was to be no ERP. And I was, I think we were all overjoyed. And then we went on a different road. Oh, the keyboard's dead. Oh, it's back. No, it's gone again. Come back to me, baby. Somebody's bashed this. Haven't you? You've bashed it. I can tell. Alright. <clears throat> it's all ogre. Okay, I think half the keys are broken. Fine. Delete those. Okay. Right, it says caps lock is off. But... What are you going to do? <laughs> it said, according to my keyboard, caps lock is off. <clears throat> so that's just a thing that we'll, we'll have to deal with as a friend. Mm -mm. 
Oh, <laughs> not finished just yet, but we're with you in a few seconds. Don't worry, slime team is coming in. I'm not finished right now, no. You want me to finish? Yeah? Okay. We'll read this story next week. I've been promised slime, guys. I've been promised slime. It is two minutes, too. And my keyboard's broken. But we'll stop there for today. Uh, the whole thing's just not working. Like... <sighs> Come here. Tell tell everybody why we can't do two minutes of drama. Why can't we? Because Daddy has diarrhea. Not true. Yeah. That's just not true. And that's why you got bogeys in your nose. No. <laughs> I gotta love you and leave you. Auntie Claire, this is naughty. <laughs> Give me my hammer. Ah. Get out. Right, I'm off to make slime, guys. I will see you on Monday. All right, be awesome. Be good. Be awesome. Bye bye. <laughs>